and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Come, Mary, for the grace of all these with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Come, Mary, for the grace of all these with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Fall forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua volatile Dei, et in Filii, et Dio di Tamme Dei, se dicendo cosa meme de gente non santa, e venavi in un fondo lo sordo, amen. Qui edo a stai vos voti vuto mea, quare le tulisi, quare le tristi sin cielo, mi uffici me, mi bus. E mi dai luce, mi dore veritate in tu, mi si vede lux, e non ti vuol, se non ti vuol, tu santo in tua, me di tabernata la tua. E ti in tua volatale Dei, e in filipifica, e di un tutto meo. Copri dei vuti, di citra, Dei, os te, os meus, fai tristi d'anima, amen, quare con tu, vas me. Spere in Deo, quando mea troppo piacevo i, mi stai rutare lutus me, e Dei, os me. Gloria, Patria, Filio, et Spiritu, et Sanctus, Dico derat in principio, e nunc et semper, et in secura seculorum. Amen. In joy, volatari Dei, et in glitifica di un tutum eo. Auditorum nostrum, in nomine Domini, tu feci cedum et terra. Confitio Dei, mi potenti, viat mei, et in Virgini, viat in Dei, mi canti, gloria tu, e non ti uccis, tanto in tua cuspetto, e paolo, viat in gloria, viat viat viat, in omnibus sanctis, vulgis fratem. Quia vota vinimis cogitatione mea vota opta mea mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ed io prego beata Maria, mi sento vigili, mi beata mi carma canti, mi beata mi vola battista, mi sento sposto, mi sento il pomo, mi beata mi vola Maria, mi beata, mi ogni santo in tua sfrate, orla le come è l'ordine del nostro. E a tutti i miei potenze, i suoi spiccati, 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 Confitio de omnipotenti, viate Maria, senti Virgini, viate Michalia, Cangelum, viato Ioane, Battiste, Sancti Sposti, Spetut, Paolo, Omnibus Sanctis, et Filipate, qui e vita vinimis cogitazione, vebo et opere. Meo culpa, meo culpa, mea maxima culpa. Ed io prego, viate Maria, senti Virgini, viate Michalia, ma Cangelum, viato Ioane, Battiste, am Sancti Sposti, Spetut, Paolo, Omnes Sanctos et Tecrate, Orrare con me, Domine del nostro. Miseriato verso i miei potenze, io si smissificati, si vesti, si spiegli, te tua si vita, me tano. Amen. Urgenza, mi sussione, mi commissione, per il torno al sole, mi diverto, mi sento potente, mi sento ricordato. Amen. Deo, se con Deo, se con Deo, se con Deo, se con Deo, e plebs, tu nei tabi, tu in cui. Con sede, non mi sto, non mi sento ricordato, non mi sento ricordato, e sali, pare, tu non dà. Domine, se la direzione, me amo, e clamo, me sa te bene. In nomine suo Biscum, et cum Spirito tuo. Ordenus. Doque bar de testimonie suis in conspecto de negum et non confondeva, rimeditava le mandati suis, quae dilexi minis, quae azi immaculati in vie, quae ambulant in lege d'ordine. Gloria, Patria, et Filio, et Spiritu, et Sancto, et si poderat in principio, et nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum, Amen. Loque bar de testimonis tuis in conspecto regum, et non confundeva, et meditava remandatis tuis, quae dilex iminis. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus bone voluntatis, ladamus te, meridicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, crasi facimus tibi prote magnum gloriam tuam, 
Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Filione Genite, Iesu Christe, Domine Deus, Agnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tales peccato mundi, misedere nobis, qui tales peccato mundi, susci fede precazionem nostra, qui se desedexeram pacis, misedere nobis. Gloriam tu solus Sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum Santo Spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Ecce vobis et cum spirito tuo, ordemus. Deus, cui et eccetera potense tui miracula et siam in sexu fragili vicoria matiri contulisti, augere propitius, utque in beate Apollonie virginis et matiris tui natalizia palius, per eus et exempe gladiamur, per Dominum nostrum Iesu Christum Filium tuum, qui tecum vivitare Deo di meritati sui tu santi Deus, per la mia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Quer rezium te doni salvate le custo scrive a tu cut mano, ne particeps, come inclinationis remuniari seculo, et sub alus tuus cum fugere tribuisti, eius et decessione de populo tua diabolica vitale contagia, et de solum dominum fioramenti sectare. Alcum dis nos praesumus domini menti te copulis defendi periculis, et incidente beatri gloriosi se vivice et e genocice Maria, Tu beatu Iosef, beatis apostolis, tu ispetu, in pole tua beati, cud mani tui figli, Dominus Sanctis. Salutem nobis tribuli, veninus e pacem, mutis luxis, atis estatis, luce de glorifus in Efesis, ecclesia tua securiti, vi servi e repitate. Per rium dun Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, filium tuum, qui te cum tu da regno ad meritatis, Spiritus Sancti Deus. Per Romnia secula seculorum. Amen. Rexio Libri Sapiense. Copite vor tibi domine rex e calodavo te deum sanguo torre meum. Copite vor nomini tuo, cornia maggiu torre, proteco factus es mihi, e liberasti copus meum reditzione, e l'acque e o lengue e neque, e te labis aporensium mandacium, e ti conspetu a stanzium factus es mihi a tutor. E liberasti me secundo multitudine misericordi e nominis tui arugiensibus preparatis ed escam, e manibus perensium anima meam, e de potis tribulationum, quae ci condeterunt me, e pressura fame, quae ci condetit me, et in medio vinis non summe struata, e de utudine ventris inferi, e de lingua concenata, e de verbo mandaci, ardece iniquo, e de lingua ingiusta, da David usque et morte manima mea dominum, quali mergius sustenente est te, e libera seus de mali bucensi, Domine Deus nostra. Deo grazie. Il existi justitia, me tobisti iniquitatem, proteri unti te Deus, Deus tuo soli e letizie. Alleluia, alleluia! Aducendo a regi vegine esposte, am proxime eus afferentu tibi letizia. Alleluia! Dominus Obispum, et cum Spirito Tuo, sequenzia Sancti Vangeli secundum et Tene. Gloria Tibi Domine. In illo tempore edixit Iesus discipoli suis paravolum ai. Simile ad illegum celorum decem veginibus, fece pientis lampade suas exieru topiem sponsum et sponsa. Quinque autem exese erant fatue, et quinque prudentes, sed quinque fatue, eceptis lampadibus non subserum doleum secu. Prudentis vero e cetro un doleum e vasti suis cum lampadibus. Ora mautim faciente sponso, domi taverum domnes e domi erni. Medior autim nocte clamo factus est. Ece sponsus veni, dexit e opio a me. Num solit servum domnes vicines ide, et bona verum da pade suas. Fatue autim sapienti vos dicevum, date il nobis teore o vestro, qui a lampadis nostre in sepultur. Responderum prudentes dicentes, Ne forte non sufficia ad nobis et vobis, 
in the box, you have a tender, then any day of it. You have a lady, then it's sponsors, and we have a lot of air, 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 and we have a Domine, domine, a peri nobis. And he responded, A mendico vobis, nescio vos. Vigilate it aque, quia nescitis diem, neque orram. Thus, give it Christ. On this, the Feast of St. Apollonia, Virgin and Martyr, the lesson is taken from the book of Ecclesiasticus. O Lord my King, I give thee thanks, O God my Deliverer, I praise thee. I extol thy name for all the succour and protection thou hast given me, saving my life from deadly peril, when calumny lay in wait, and lying tongues assailed me. In full sight of all that stood by thou didst come to my rescue. Roaring lions stood ready to devour me, and thou in that great mercy, that renowned mercy of thine, did deliver me. I was in the hands of my mortal enemies, shut in on every side by misfortune. There were stifling flames all round me, and I stood in the heart of the fire uninjured. I looked out into the deep womb of the grave, when foul lips brought lying accusations, and a cruel king gave unjust sentence. While life lasts, this heart shall praise the Lord, if men will but wait for thee patiently. Thou dost deliver them, dost rescue them. O Lord our God, from the power of the heathen. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who went to bring the bridegroom and his bride home, taking their lamps with them. Five of these were foolish and five were wise. The five foolish, when they took their lamps, did not provide themselves with oil, but those who were wise took oil in the vessels they carried, as well as the lamps. The bridegroom was long in coming, so that they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. And at midnight the cry was raised, Behold, the bridegroom is on his way, go out to meet him. Thereupon all these virgins awoke and fell to trimming their lamps. And now the foolish said to the wise, Share your oil with us, our lamps are burning low. But the wise ones answered, how if there is not enough for us and for you? Better that you should find your way to the merchants and buy for yourselves. And so while they were away buying it, the bridegroom came. Those who stood ready escorted him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards those other virgins came with a cry, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered, Believe me, I do not recognise you. Be on the watch then, the day of it and the hour of it are unknown to you. Thou Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of God, you say, Fies, we do sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass. On this, as we said, the feast of Saint Apollonia, Virgin and Martyr of Alexandria. We also commemorate today the uh, octave of Saint Catherine of Stenning, our co patron. Uh, of this chapel and mission. So Apollonia's uh, testimony and witness comes to us via a letter of which large extracts uh, still exist from the Bishop of Alexandria at the time and an eyewitness to the events, uh, Bishop Dionysius, who was writing to uh, Bishop Fabius at Antioch, describing to him what was occurring in Alexandria. The Emperor Datius came to the throne in 250. So it was during the reign of Philip the Arab that these if particular events took place, though they were a foretaste of that great persecution which was to follow when Datius Augustus assumed the throne and decreed by law that everyone uh, should burn, make sacrifice to the pagan idol, idols to prove their loyalty 
to the state, to the empire. This, of course, as we've reflected before, was already a kind of thing for the Romans. That is to say that uh, state and the state uh, religion or state piety, uh, they weren't, as it were, they didn't separate uh, uh, religion from the state. Uh, the two were intrinsically combined. In many ways, of course, in part because emperors like Nero had declared themselves gods, or at least demigods, but had declared themselves divinity, divine, uh, which meant, uh, which then introduced the mindset that to be against the uh, emperor was to be against the state. Indeed, the emperor embodied the state. He was the empire. Thus, to not practice the state religion was considered exceptional. It was considered an exception. Now, some exceptions had been and were made. For example, uh, with the conquering of Palestine, the exception was made to allow the Jews to continue to practice their religion. But otherwise, in many places, other religions were not permitted to be exercised, and rather, uh, people were expected to adopt, uh, or at least pay lip service, to the religion of the empire. So anyone who did not do so was considered an atheist and was considered a traitor. Indeed, one would be considered impious for refusing to offer sacrifice, meaning to burn incense, before either the, the, the idol of the divinity himself, meaning uh, the emperor, or indeed his chosen divinity, if perhaps he hadn't declared himself a god, then one was expected to honour the god that he had chosen for his reign. So just before Datius comes to the uh, imperial throne, uh, the general consensus anyway had long been ex uh, existing uh, that not to give honor, not to respect to the pagan gods was perhaps to be treasonous. But something provoked, something sparked a great riot in Alexandria and an angry mob who determined that uh, those who did not uh, practice the state religion must indeed be traitors, must indeed uh, be enemies of the state, thus of the empire, and thus of loyal and faithful citizens. And so they rose up, and particularly in this instance, attacked the Christians. The Christians, of course, who would have been known for their doctrine that God was their king, that Jesus was their king and saviour. So it was that Christians were targeted. The first to die was an elderly man uh, named Metra, or Metras, uh, who was blinded by having reeds uh, uh, stuck into his eyes, and then he was stoned to death. He was quickly followed by a lady called Quinta, who was uh, grabbed and uh, taken, dragged to a uh, pagan temple. Uh, there was demanded by the crowd to offer sacrifice, to burn incense, to the pagan idol. She refused. Instead, she rather cursed the false god. And so it was that she was then dragged out into the street and stoned to death. Then came the turn of our saint today, Apollonia, an aged virgin, according to legend. And that perhaps may seem a little odd to us. So often, the virgin martyrs that we commemorate uh, were extremely young. But here, we have a, an elderly woman, a mature woman, who had long consecrated herself uh, to as a bride of Christ. This perhaps would have been well known uh, for a, a, a lifelong spinster at that time. Uh, was unusual uh, to have uh, um, to be respected in society at that time. One uh, was presumed to to get married, to be married. So anyone who wasn't was considered with some suspicion. And that's probably declaring herself a consecrated virgin and dedicated to Christ as her king and as her saviour. So, of course, she was targeted. She was grabbed by the crowd. And uh, initially, 
uh, stowed, uh, but this uh, not working, i.e. this not killing her, a great pyre uh, was uh, erected outside the city and she was from March to it. And according to Dionysius's eyewitness account, uh, she stood before the flames and rather than be put into the flames, she herself walked boldly into them under inspiration of the Holy Ghost and expired there in the pyre. This grew admiration from the other Christians and gave them encouragement so that when Datius imposed the edict outlawing all other forms of religious practice that would not in the first instance give honour to the state religion, many Alexandrians who were Christians uh, willingly went to their deaths as martyrs. And uh, among them, another name comes to us from the mists of time, the Oscarus, also mentioned by uh, Dionysius in his letter to Fabius at Antioch. The Oscarus was only 15 and endured all sorts of torture, but did not expire. This too, this example of one so young, uh, also encouraged the Christians in Alexandria. He was permitted to live only because he was so young, so that his torture was never intended to kill him, but severe torture indeed he endured, for whatever they put upon him, he did not suffer. So he uh, uh, was believed uh, by the Christian Alexandrians uh, perhaps to be preserved by God for some bolder and greater act of witness later on, such as Dionysius uh, puts it to Fabius. And so today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate the witness of Apollonia, but also too, of course, her companion Christians who were also martyred during this time. We give thanks for their witness, we give thanks for their testimony, we give thanks for their strength, for their fortitude, for their forbearance. Though indeed many other Christians succumbed and uh, offered the uh, incense to the false idols, nonetheless uh, the uh, church at Alexandria became famed uh, for her martyrs in this period, both immediately before and during the reign of Datius Augustus. And we've reflected my, before, my brothers and sisters, about the nature of martyrdom and about the prospect of martyrdom for ourselves. And as I have suggested before, I think we are coming to a time when indeed Christians will uh, be forced, however, um, however much they might not want to be, uh, but may indeed become forced to make a stand for the gospel and for the faith. Only this morning uh, I read a report uh, suggesting our uh, womb transplants uh, for those uh, men who think they're women, that this now is perhaps a medical possibility and should be a legal right for such men. Such a kind of Frankenstein scenario just a few years ago would have seemed impossible to us. And yet scientists, or some scientists and uh, practitioners of medicine are becoming bolder, imbued, perhaps encouraged by the increasing prevalence of secularism and atheism in our societies. Because of course, when you take away God, really one takes away an objective morality a sense of ethic. Ethics themselves become reduced to a form of relativism and subjectivism. This we've already seen uh, predominant in our society, uh, so that where once before things like uh, promiscuity, 
uh, uh, cohabitation, uh, abortion, um, uh, children out of wedlock, uh, whereas before these things would have, were, were uh, frowned upon uh, by society, considered uh, immoral. Uh, today, of course, uh, nobody bats an eyelid. All these things are now uh, permitted. Indeed, the only sense of morality that most people have these days is wholly subjective. It's a wholly subjective appreciation uh, to themselves, for themselves, what they themselves deem to be right or wrong, irrespective of how it may affect others around them, and irrespective of history, irrespective uh, of, um, well, irrespective of anything. <coughs> Increasingly today, we hear people talk about rights, bang on about rights, that people have a right to this and a right to that. And this, of course, is the antithesis of the Gospel. This, my brothers and sisters, is uh, where uh, uh, the uh, apostasy of so many Christians today uh, should be easily recognisable. Why is this the antithesis of the Gospel? Because the Gospel teaches us that our lives are not our own, that our lives are gifts from God, that our life, when we become a Christian, should be returned to God, offered back to God, that loving God means to keep His commandments, to obey His law, to follow His sense of morality, to follow His moral teachings, given to us in divine revelation and expanded for us and explicated to us by Christ, the Word made flesh in the self, God made man. As Christians, we recognise that before God, we have no rights. We have no rights. We have no right to life. We have no right to God's providence. And yet, because God is love of his loving mercy and kindness and generosity towards us, he gifts us life. He gifts us the things necessary to sustain us from his providence. He gives us the air to breathe the water to drink, food to eat. All these things the Orthodox Christian should recognise. He has no right to, but enjoys because of God's love. Therefore it is quite wrong for Christians to speak of rights, in the, in the sense of speaking of rights to any kind of natural thing. However, the time is fast coming when we as Christians ought to perhaps to begin to assert our legal rights and indeed to campaign for legal rights, for rights under the law. For this is the area now, this is the forum where uh, this immorality of our secular society is being fought. Compared to most uh, other uh, groups, we as Christians, particularly in the West, have perhaps not felt it necessary to ask or demand for rights. We have rather thought that the legacy of Christendom that uh, inspired and founded uh, our societies already gave us the protections necessary to, pre to live and exercise our religion. Whereas the truth is increasingly becoming obvious that now is the time for us as Christians to begin to assert, as I say, and to campaign for rights under the law to be able to keep our practicing our faith. Now this of course means 
and suggests that if we don't do so, then we will find ourselves in a situation not unlike that of the early Christians of the first three centuries of the Church's existence. We will find ourselves variously in situations where our faith or our teachings or the exercise of our faith will be outlawed. Attempts already have been made. Test cases have already been uh, demonstrated in the courts. And the time has come, my brothers and sisters, for us to make a stand as previous Christians and witnesses to the faith did before us. question is how many of us will allow ourselves to be open to the receipt of the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to act with the courage and conviction as perhaps Apollonia did or the young Dioscorus did how many of us are willing to make a stand how many of us are willing to be counted? An exercise we've suggested before, and today would be a good day to do it again, is to imagine if Christianity were outlawed tomorrow, what evidence would there be to convict you? What evidence would you present to convict yourself? What witnesses could be brought forward to accuse you of being a Christian? How much, my brothers and sisters, do you love Christ and how much have you loved God? Let your neighbours and those who know you and know of you were they so inclined, could accuse you before the magistrates. Are you guilty of feeding the hungry? Are you guilty of giving drink to the thirsty? Are you guilty of clothing the naked? Are you guilty of visiting the sick or those imprisoned? Are you guilty of generous hospitality toward the stranger? Are you guilty for proclaiming the good news of redemption, of God's love? Are you guilty of proclaiming the gospel by the manner of your living? Could you be found guilty because of the virtue of charity exercised in your manner, in your approach, in your attitude, in your interaction with others? time has come, my brothers and sisters, that we who confess Christ crucified should, be, should expect to face the prospect of persecution ourselves, just as our forebears did, just as our Saviour did. Are we prepared? as the Apostles enthusiastically suggested they were. The share of the bitter cup that our Saviour himself took upon the cross for our salvation.
are we prepared to be united with his passion, with the expression of his love. Are we prepared to die in love for the love of God expressed toward us? In many ways, my brothers and sisters, for those of you perhaps who like to avoid confrontation or not to provoke confrontation, the simplest way that we might be able to counter what many of us think is inevitable is for all Christians everywhere to more deliberately live their lives as Christians demonstrably and visibly. To manifest God's love in their lives and through their lives towards others. Now, my brothers and sisters, is the time for us to heed that new commandment of our Saviour, as St John records. Love one another as I have loved you, for by this will the world know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Because in large part, my brothers and sisters, the part of the reason why the persecution has come and is coming is because so few of us as Christians love as Jesus loved, as Jesus would love through us toward others. While yes, we must exercise prudence and encourage others to use prudence judgment wisely. Perhaps we should be softer in our delegation of those things which are at odds with God's law. As we reflected the other week, perhaps we should more of us adopt the adage of St Bernard of Clairvaux and St Francis de Sales that one catches more flies with honey than with vinegar. Perhaps we should lessen the tone of condemnation and the negative tones which clearly people do not wish to hear that turns people off. And instead, perhaps, put more energy into manifesting God's love. So often, my brothers and sisters, people confuse the situation because they suggest that so many who bear the name of Christ are not Christ-like. because of their negativity, because of their condemnatory tones. And this is a great shame when you consider that the vast majority of Christians do practice charity. I've said it before, that if the churches in this city alone were to cease all their charitable endeavour, were to cease uh, operating the night shelters for the homeless, were to cease operating the food banks that they founded, were to cease their shoebox and presence appeals at Christmas time for those who can't afford gifts, 
if the churches were to close their doors and stop practicing charity, suddenly society would realize that contrary to their belief that everything about the church is negative, they would suddenly miss the very quiet but positive witness that the church has been manifesting for centuries. If the church throughout the world were to cease all her charitable efforts, if all the food programmes and betterment programmes, all the orphanages, all the hospitals and clinics and schools and colleges and universities, if all these things were to cease, people might then realise what it is that the church has to offer. Now we should hope, my brothers and sisters, that we don't need to make that sort of stand. Though it should be noted, many people want what we do charitably to stop. With a new sacred, uh, with a new, the new amorality, the new atheism, the new secularism, is seeking to close down our charitable institutions, our schools, already our orphanages in this country. Don't forget, imposing as they do their ideology through the law. But if more of us, demonstrably, if more of us manifested charity rather than judgment, if more of us gave a more positive witness without compromise, without compromise of morals or principles or doctrine, but just simply by manifesting love in our lives and through our lives toward others, we might yet enable the world around us to see Christ in us. because the vast majority still recognize that our Savior is the epitome of love. The vast majority still recognize that the words and teachings of our Savior are of love, about love, speak of love, convey love. Many say there is nothing offensive in the teachings of Christ himself. But they don't feel the same way about those, some of those who follow his teachings. So as much, my brothers and sisters, as we need to be bolder, we also need to be softer. We need to be bolder in asserting and protecting and campaigning for our own rights under the law. So that we may enjoy the privileges and the protections that others do, both people of faith and not. 
but we also need to to be softer in our condemnation we need to try to find the way to speak truth to our society with love and I'll be the first to admit that that's not easy But as I suggested a few weeks ago, perhaps rather than condemning the sins, we ought to speak more about the effects of sins. Clearly it does not work to try to suggest to people that they should, do not, that they should not do this or that. But if we can explain to them why they should not do this or that because of the negative impact and effect that it will have on their lives and the lives of, they, of those they love around them then perhaps we might yet be able to persuade them at least to be able to appreciate our perspective and where we are coming from is certainly worth, my brothers and sisters, further reflection by us all. Who would seek to speak words of love to our neighbours. But all that said, at the same time, we must prepare ourselves and steal ourselves and find the courage as well as the wisdom and the grace for the persecution that is come and is coming. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Domino Sobiscum et cum Spirito Tuo. Parlebus. Afferento regi vicines posteam, proximes afferento tibi letizia et exultazion, aducentur in tempium regido.
Ramia Sekula Sekulorum Amen. In Dominus Vobiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, Susum Corda, Ave Musa et Dominum, Gracias ad Amus Domino Deo Nostro, In Nome Diustum Est, Ver in In Nome Diustum Est, Eipo me salutare, Nos tibi sempre dubito et gracia tacere, Domine Sancte Pater, Onipotens et Tenetens, Et Christum Dominum Nostrum, Eipo in Vestato in Fum Laudum Angeli, Adorando me nazione, Spremus Podestates, Celi Celo non quebe tutte de beate servitim, so ci so tra zioni con celibam. Con cui vuote nostri voci tutti i miei besti e preparamo suffici con pressioni vincentes. Sanctus. 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 Dominus Deus Sabeat. Plenis in Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis. Benedictus tui veniti, Nomine Domini, Hosanna in Excelsis.